Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, the fool can't be fooled again. Now, that famous quote, it was given to us by one of the greatest orators of our generation, former President George W. Bush, better known to all of his friends as W. That eloquent quote from our friend W, it applies perfectly to this conversation we're about to have. Because yesterday, I'll admit it. I was a bit fooled. Yesterday, I was starting to believe that Pat McAfee was really being given free reign at the Worldwide Leader in Woke. I was surprised when ESPN didn't suspend Pat McAfee for flushing his bosses on live television. I was also surprised when ESPN didn't demand that Aaron Rodgers be removed from the Pat McAfee show. I was starting to think that maybe, just maybe, I had been wrong. Maybe, just maybe, Pat McAfee would not allow his show to be changed by doofus executives at ESPN. <laughs> but once again, at least in regards to this particular situation, Casey was right. While I was at lunch today, I received an email from one of you guys. Pat McAfee caves to ESPN, removes Aaron Rodgers from his show. Now, initially, I thought to myself, there's no fucking way that this happened. While sitting at a red light, I even replied to the dude who sent me this email, and I told him I would have to corroborate this story. I mean, seriously, if they were going to remove Aaron Rodgers from the show, why in the hell would they wait a full week to do it? Why wouldn't they make that decision last week? Perhaps Pat McAfee fought behind the scenes to give Aaron Rodgers a chance to respond to Jim Kimmel. I don't know the reasoning, but what I do know, Aaron Rodgers done with the Pat McAfee show supposedly just for this season. I wouldn't be surprised if Aaron Rodgers was finished permanently with Pat McAfee. I know if it was me, I would be. There is absolutely no way I would return to this show. Let me ask you something. Let's pretend for a second that Pat McAfee never signed with ESPN. He was still doing his show on YouTube. He was still incessantly plugging FanDuel. FanDuel is the only place where you can place a $5 wager and win $5 million. Terms and conditions apply. We are legally allowed to lie during our advertisements and we'll take all of your money like every other sports book. If the Pat McAfee show was still exclusive to YouTube, would this same decision have been made? As you're about to hear in a second, Pat McAfee, he claims, he claims this decision was made because Aaron Rodgers was too controversial. Um, that didn't seem to be a problem last year. That didn't seem to be a problem the year before that. If I remember correctly, Pat McAfee used to embrace the controversy that Aaron Rodgers created. Matter of fact, he has actually given credit to Aaron Rodgers for making his show mainstream. So why all of a sudden is this a problem? Remember when Pat McAfee signed with ESPN? What was the very first assurance that he gave his audience? We will never change! ESPN has given me their best promise that they will not change Pat McAfee. Um, I can't think of a bigger change to the Pat McAfee show than the removal of Aaron Rodgers. But KC, it's just for this season. He'll be back next year. Yeah, uh, sure. That's what they're saying now, but I look down the list of people I trust. Actually, I've got the list right here. I have referenced this exclusive list several times in the last few weeks. Let me show it to you. Here, right here, this... This is the list of people I trust. I'm sorry, Pat and McAfee, you didn't make the list. After listening to this explanation from Pat and McAfee regarding the removal of Aaron Rodgers from the show, I have come to two possible conclusions, two possible reasons that this happened. But before I get into that, let's go ahead and get to the sponsor for today's video, my friends over at Giltech. Right now, my fiance, she's in the process of redecorating our house, meaning I'm spending a hell of a lot of time in my studio to avoid getting caught in her wrath. My married men out there, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. But the other day, I make the mistake of walking inside to grab something, and I get hit with that question that every man dreads being asked. Honey, can you help me with something? 
She was putting this new rug on the floor. She didn't have anything to cut the mat that goes up under the rugs. But as luck would have it, and this is a true story, the day before, I had just received my promotional products from Giltec. I pointed her to the box where we had 12 ready-made razor blades ready to be used. She was absolutely thrilled. You just never know when you're going to need a razor blade around the house. These Giltec manufactured blades, they're lightweight. They easily fit in your pocket. They can be operated with just one hand. They also make blades specifically for left-handed people. So if you're left-handed, works for you too. They come in an assortment of colors. Best of all, they're affordable. Matter of fact, Giltex Plastic Series, the most affordable blade on the market, and everything is 100% made in the USA. Giltex is a veteran-owned company, and they vow to keep all of their products made in America. So click the link in the description below. Use my promo code BTL. It'll save you 10% off every single order you place with Giltex. All right, earlier today, Pat McAfee informed his audience that Aaron Rodgers' Tuesday was ending prematurely. Now, typically, Aaron Rodgers makes his weekly appearances through the Super Bowl, but this year, they decided to cut ties a month early. Listen to the explanation. Watch for yourself. I got to start by yesterday, because quite a conversation. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Now? Very usual. Not like that. The, um, <laughs> yeah. So Aaron Rodgers Tuesday season four is uh, done. Yeah. Ah, complete. Next yeah. season. There's going to be a lot of people that are happy with that. Myself included, to be honest. With the way <laughs> it ended, it got real loud. Mm -hmm. And uh, real loud. I'm happy that that is not going to be my mentions going forward. Mm -hmm. Which, and then all these people that think we jump line and we don't deserve it, like those people have hated us since we were on the internet. I have a lot of respect for them and their hustle and their grind, but they were going to be against us forever. And we knew that. I knew that coming into this. And over the last week, we have certainly given them all a lot of stuff to get mad about. We've given a lot of people who've been waiting for us to fail a lot of ammo and things to attack us for over the last week. And we would love to get back to the point where we just whoosh, move on and continue to silence all the haters over here who can't negotiate as good as I can. All the people over here who can't create a show as good as us, and all the people up here who just can always be here, and they're going to hustle and do their thing, which I respect, but we need to do that, and that is our focus, that is our goal, and Aaron Rodgers, some of his thoughts and opinions, though, do piss off a lot of people. A lot of people. And uh, I'm pumped that that is no longer going to be every single Wednesday of my life, uh, which it has been for the last few weeks. On Friday, obviously, I threw us into the fire as well. Forever stand by that. Everything else, though, like, just can't do that and not what we want to be known for. First of all, and this is not the first time I've heard him say this, I don't know who Pat McAfee's talking about when he's talking about all the haters. Sometimes I feel like he mentions this thinking that he's the only media personality with haters. I don't know who Pat McAfee is referring to here. I can only speak for myself. I am often accused of hating Pat McAfee, which couldn't be further from the truth. I've got zero problem with Pat McAfee. Matter of fact, I used to find him relatable. I used to relate to him. He doesn't like rules. He doesn't like bosses. Neither do I. I feel like I have been pretty consistent on this. My issue has never been with Pat McAfee. I just have never thought Pat McAfee fits at ESPN. I don't think this experiment is going to work. And so far, I've been right. If you don't believe me, go look at his television ratings. But after listening to his explanation, I came up with two conclusions as to why Aaron Rodgers was removed from the show. Neither conclusion, I think, is a good look for Pat McAfee. Number one, Pat McAfee is telling the truth here. He grew tired of the controversy. He got tired of defending himself, got tired of fighting his bosses at ESPN. He was exhausted from all the negative publicity, some of which, as he admitted himself, he caused. And credit to Pat McAfee for having the self-awareness to admit it. But either way, Pat McAfee got tired of the shit fucks criticizing him and his show, so he removed what he thought was the main problem, Aaron Rodgers. Conclusion number two, ESPN finally decided to impose their will. ESPN broke their best promise. They went back on their word. They finally had enough, and they decided that Pat McAfee could no longer have full creative control over his own show. Management at the Worldwide Leader in Woke, they told Pat McAfee, 
No more Aaron Rodgers. And like a good little soldier, Pat McAfee said, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am, depending on your preferred pronouns. Now, which do you think it was? Number one or number two? Me personally, I think it was a combination of both. I think Pat McAfee was being pressured behind the scenes. Hell, over the last few months, I think he has been pressured behind the scenes by management to get rid of Aaron Rodgers. I think this has been going on for a while now. I do also believe that Pat McAfee was tired of being criticized. He was tired of fighting with his bosses. He was tired of feeling ostracized. Now, I don't know him personally, but Pat McAfee, he just doesn't seem like the type of guy who can handle the criticism. He seems like he seeks validation. He wants to be liked by everyone. And look, there's nothing wrong with that. But in most cases... Those aren't exactly the types that are going to go to bat for you. To save face, maybe ESPN allowed Pat McAfee to present this to the public like this was 100% his call. In a statement to OutKick, ESPN said, This was Pat's decision and we fully support it. <laughs> yeah, I bet they fully support it because this is exactly what they wanted. I think the pressure has been building for months and Pat McAfee finally had enough. Do you remember what else happened yesterday? Everyone was focused on Aaron Rodgers and his response to Jim Kimmel, but do you remember what we highlighted from his appearance with Pat McAfee? Aaron Rodgers, he went after Mike Foss, Senior Vice President at ESPN. 24 hours later, Aaron Rodgers removed from the show. Coincidence? If I'm Aaron Rodgers, I am done with Pat McAfee. Just think about this from his perspective. You are one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, that the Pat McAfee show broke into the mainstream. He's admitted this himself. Aaron Rodgers propelled his show. Pat McAfee didn't seem to mind the controversy then, but as soon as they get to ESPN and that fire starts getting hot under that ass, you can't defend me? Aaron Rodgers seems like a stubborn dude who has a tendency to hold grudges. I cannot imagine that he appreciates this. Pat McAfee, he could have just simply said, Aaron Rodgers is done for this season and just moved on. But no, 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 no. He had to sprinkle in the fact that he's glad to see him go. He's tired of the controversy. He's tired of Aaron Rodgers pissing people off. I'm kind of confused by this because I thought this show was about the controversy. So is that changing about the Pat McAfee show too? Is the show shying away from controversy now? But I thought the show wouldn't change. I thought signing with ESPN would change nothing about the Pat McAfee show. <laughs> I'll ask the same question that I asked you guys yesterday. How long can it last? How long can this last between ESPN and Pat McAfee? I mean, they're not off to a great start. This show has been the focus of sports media for the last week. There has never been more media attention on the Pat McAfee show. You know what he drew on television last Wednesday? The height of this controversy? The day after Aaron Rodgers caused an emotional meltdown for Jim Kimmel? Pat McAfee? 306,000 viewers. Thursday? 290,000. You know, controversy is good when it translates to ratings, but controversy becomes a real problem when it doesn't. Like I told you guys the other day, this is the Don Lemon situation at CNN all over again. But give me your thoughts on this. Pat McAfee removes Aaron Rodgers from the show. Was this his decision or was he forced into this by management at ESPN? Or do you guys agree with me and think it was a combination of both? Now, I have never been a consistent viewer of the Pat McAfee show. I'll catch segments here and there, but I'm not really in a position to answer this question. If you're a long-term viewer of Pat McAfee, has the show changed since he joined with ESPN? Or is the show starting to change just now? I'm interested to know this, so let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.